episode of the intellectual ex- experience. We're currently in um, quarantine, so that's why I'm picking my guest for today, which is, I think you can introduce yourself. My name is William Williamson. I'm a specialist doctor in dentistry with a PhD. I specialized in endodontics. Okay, uh, could you like explain what, what that is? Because I have no idea, and I, I'm guessing people that are watching this have no idea what the hell you just said. Endodontics, that's what we mostly do is infection related, and that's root filling. We clean out that root canal system, this fixes it, and then we fill it out again. So, so that, yeah, go on, please. And then the next dentist takes over and put on something on the top. Okay. We're just in the root canal system. Right. So, so what's the difference between that and a normal dentist? The main difference is that we do the special thing that's much harder to do. We work under microscope all the time. So it's much more difficult. And it's, um, we don't do any fillings. No tough fillings, no crowns, no bridges, nothing. We only do the root fill, root canal system. Right, so that's way deeper, right? Yes. So like a normal dentist will like just um, fix holes on the top, but, you, but when it's like really bad, like all the way down to the root, that's where you operate. Right. Some dentists can do it, but usually we get referred to the tricky ones, the tricky cases that's really hard to fix. Yeah, right, so so every everyone that a normal dentist cannot fix, they get sent out to you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And when we're finished, we don't see the the patient again. All right. Yeah. So so it's not like you know a yearly check or anything. You you just get the special cases. Right. Yeah. And um, uh, can you tell me about can like can you tell me about your experience? Like you know how many years have you been doing this? How how many years of that? I've been practicing for over 30 years and in private practice, but also I've been teaching uh, at the university for 16 years. Right, so so you've been a dentist for 30 and teaching for 16. Yes, and then I took a PhD also. Yeah. Somewhere in between there. Right, so, 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 like, so you have a PhD. PhD and a specialized license for endodontics, and then dentistry also, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so like one of the one of the main reasons that I wanted to bring you on, or like you know do do this uh, episode with you, is that uh, <laughs> is is so that um, you know, have you seen those commercials with um toothpaste where it's like oh. Nine out of ten dentists recommend, or a lot anything along those lines. Yeah. Right. Do Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I I've seen those a lot go around, right? You know, like this this branding has like nine out of ten, and then this other branding has like f- four to five, right? So I don't think that really makes sense. So I, I was just hoping if you could like you know elaborate on that. Like, have you ever been asked? By a toothpaste company to it's recommend mostly, anything. It's mostly business as usual. That is to say that these, I mean, ninety nine percent of all toothpastes are good for the teeth. Right. But um, the thing is that these manufacturers who who get sponsored, they sponsor the dental society. They can use their um, positive things about the toothpaste because it's not a lie. It's good, but even uh, but most toothpastes are because they're very similar in composition. They're made out more or less of the same thing. Right. So There's very little different between toothpastes. So you, in, in theory, we can recommend all toothpastes. Toothpastes at all. Yeah. Most of them we can recommend. Because they're so similar, and, and they do a good job. I mean, they have fluor and they clean the teeth. So, what happens is that this firm pays the dental association money, 
So then they're allowed to use their name as the, as we recommend. So it's it's marrow money more or less. Right, right. So 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 it's it's obviously not ninety percent of t dentists, but you know that bracket, right? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you said that every just about every toothpaste is the same. Yes. So uh, just every so nearly all dentists can say to each and every toothpaste we recommend it. Right. But if you pay the money to the dental society, then you can put that statement on your brand. See, it's not free. So the dental society gets money for, for recommending a certain type of, certain uh, brand of toothpaste. Right, so... so it, Even it, though you can actually do it to everyone. But you can't brand it because you're not paying. It's only the manufacturer that pay to the dental society can st stample and say that uh, so so many dentists recommend. So so it, it's. But do do you know if if um do you know any dentists like that have been asked to do like a survey or anything? No. Nobody. All right. Okay. So, so basically, so does it really? So does it matter what um, toothpaste you buy, or it's basically the same? It's basically the same. All right. We all ninety nine percent of dentists recommend a use of toothpaste, and right. they're all more or less the same. So it doesn't matter which type you use, actually. Right. Mm. Uh, but is there different kinds like at all like you know is it only one kind or is no they are a little bit different between these toothpastes of course they are some have um, they are but there's a minimal difference it's um, it's mostly small things some have um, more like a sand that takes uh, like a small, like a sandpaper. Right. So it cleans a little bit. You get the feeling it cleans better, but um, but it in in long term it's not good because it will polish away your emalia. So and that's what protects your teeth. So we see less and less of these toothpastes. They were more twenty or thirty years ago. Um, then you have these small differences with uh, some have zinc that's getting now quite popular and zinc what it does it makes you have less bad breath has up to 12 hours uh, mechanism so it kills out the bacteria that lies in your tongue and that means you get the better breath it's not so bad but otherwise it's more or less the same right like, uh, could you just put the mic up to your face? Like, yeah. You just pick more up. We're good. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. So, right. So, so you know, it, it, when you go to the store, and you buying, buying toothpaste, it doesn't really matter. Not really. If it's, it's more what you eat and how often you brush. Right. That's it. And you also said you also said that um some toothpaste like brush or um scrape the um what would you call it emalia emalia around right yeah. um it, is that what's happening when you're whitening like is that is that toothpaste that are whitening the teeth no um, when you when you have darkening of the teeth there are two two things that happens it's either you get like a layer on top of the teeth a thin layer that gets dark often like coffee and smoking. These things you can brush away. It's just lying on the top of the tooth, right. on the surface, thin layer. You can brush that, and it's more effective if you have um, tooth toothpaste that has more sand in it. Okay? Cozier sand. 
than the other ones. But over long term, it's not good for you because you will wipe away the emalia over time. So it's getting less and less of these. But then you have the other thing, and that is the discoloration of the so-called dentine. Okay. That's the inner layer, inner body of the tooth. And that's usually what we use, we want to bleach. It's called bleaching. Mm -hmm. And over time, this inner inner core of the tooth gets darkened because it will take color discoloration from the food you eat. Okay. Coffee, tea, red wine, chocolate, things like that. So over a period of time, your teeth will get darker. There's a difference between when you are 20 years old and 40. But it depends a little bit on your genetic how quickly this happens and what you eat. And that's the, if you want to get a whiter teeth, you want to bleach. It's called bleaching. Mm -hmm. And there are different ways to get whiter tooth. Um, mostly it's used um, peroxide in different types, in different forms. It depends a little bit on the manufacturers and the percentage. And it's usually in a gel form, gel. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's you make like a small um, membrane around the teeth. You put the gel in, and then you put it into uh, over the teeth. And over time, this peroxide will diffuse th through the emalia into the inner core of the tooth, and then it will lighten up over time. Right. So. And that's the um, that's the usual method, the most used. But then there there are different variation of that method. There's a f like a film. The Crest Company, Proper and uh, Proper and Gambler did. There was like a film you put on, like a sheet. That was one. Uh, it's called the Crest. And then you have the gel. And sometimes you can uh, have things that you paint on, and then you put light on. Um, you put light on for uh, to activate. So there, there are three these these three different methods to bleach the teeth. Right. Uh, it's, it's all the same mechanism. It's just a different uh, approach. And and all of these you have to you have to go to a dentist and like. No, not really. Like Some you, you can. can do this at home? Yes, you can do it at home. You can buy. Like the like the crest sheets, these thin. You just you just lay it on your teeth at home, or you and there there are some of these um, home trays. You can just warm up and you bite to them and you make them your own, custom made at home. But the best ones are are those who are made at the dentistry. Right. Where tan techniques and makes it fits nicer. It's less. It doesn't go into your mouth doesn't leak is better to say the least right is is that the most safest as well yeah and i know when you when you say bleaching and you know when you're making your teeth white whiter essentially uh is that damaging the teeth in any way no and yes it doesn't damage it but it th there's a theory that it can get a little bit more br brittle brittle over time but it's very hard to um prove it but there in very seldom cases you get so-called eruption um, where the, the, the your own body starts fighting starts attacking your teeth but it's very very seldom but it can happen and uh, it's only few it's less than a micro micro percent of that but it, it can happen right and and what does that look like then your body starts eating up your tooth, looking looking at your tooth as a foreign body. Mm -hmm. So it will destroy it in the end. Right. So, so it, yeah. it's very seldom, but we have seen it. It's very seldom. Mm -hmm. But um, there are some proofs that that can happen. But uh, it's so seldom that it's not really a uh, thing that people think much about. Right. So 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 there's no way. To, so if that happens, 
you just have to like remove the tooth and get a replacement. Well, yeah, if if it if you don't discover it early enough, yes, you will. Right, right. So, so while we're on the topic of whitening the teeth, mm. um, I don't know if you answered answer this already, but you know those whitening. You, we talk about those whitening toothpastes, right? Yes. Uh, you you said you said that the most thing you can like you know brush away was from coffee or chocolate like the, like on the outer, surface yeah very like on the surface of your tooth right yes it, it, is that the only way the whitening toothpaste work or is no like, the air is no the, no the air is a little bit there have been um, those um, reports I've been reading and reviews is. It's so little; it hardly lightens, bleeds them at all because it's so weak. Right. So it's more, you could more say it's because after you bleach your teeth, what happens? The day you quit, they start getting dark again over time. So after one to two years, from you have bleached them, you start seeing teeth going slowly dark again. So. You have to bleach again after a few years. Depends right. on how much coffee and how much red wine and all these things you do. Right. You're talking about bleaching. Bleaching, yeah. Right. So what happens is there are some indication that if you, if you bleach, mm -hmm. and then you use some of these toothpastes that, that are, then that will slower that process of getting darker again. Right. But there's been... I remember they they tried this a, a, a few years ago, uh, these whitening toothpaste, and they didn't notice any difference at all. It was so little over one year period that it was more or less useless. Right. But it might indicate that after you have bleeds, they the you would slow the the uh, rate going backwards again to get brown, darkening. So, so what's your take on, um, take on whitening, whitening, uh, toothpaste? Like, is that? I would say more or less useless. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, you know, it, it's not worth buying at all. No, 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 no. You won't notice any difference. Right. Um, right. So, so, so that's basically... <laughs> so, um, the whitening does not, like you know, it is it does not uh, deteriorate your te your teeth or anything. More or less, not no. Right, right. So, so it's it's still you can have perfectly healthy teeth and have yeah. them white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but so and you also said um, how how many years until you you have to bleach again? It depends. It depends on the person, what you eat, and um, a little bit on the genetic side. Right. So, so usually after about like three years, people you start going, oh, I think I'll bleach it a little bit again. Right. But it takes up to probably about five to ten years to really get to the same. But when you're already whitening your teeth, you notice it immediately when it starts going a little bit dark. Right. So you're more, uh, you have a less threshold. So I would think uh, my experience probably around average one one and a half year after you've bleached it, you bleached it, but it's much quicker also because you need less less and less to whiten next time. Okay. So it's usually just to get to the back back to the back uh, to the color you had one year earlier. It's quite much easier than before after the first one. Yeah, right, and, and and the whole darkening of the teeth is is natural and happens yes, to yes, yes. just about everyone. Every, or everyone. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, some people are born with whiter teeth than others. Some people are born with more dense pe uh, teeth than others, and some people are born with more teeth with more permeability than others. And those who have that, they their teeth get more darkened. Right. So you you can have like twins that drink and eat the same food and one is more has more darker teeth than the other one at the same so right. so it's it's just um it's matter, matter of anatomic differences and what you eat right 
And right. you, you can see this in different countries. So, so some places in India where the food they eat food that has very strong colored. So the, t- the teeth get quite dark. Right. Mm. Right, but so, so so it's not only sweets. It's also just no nothing to do food. with the, nothing to do with sweets. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. It's mostly the here in the Western, like in Europe and the States. It's mostly. Uh, I was reading. I saw this test, and it was mostly coffee and tea, different types of tea, and red wine. Right. Red wine, coffee, and special tea, different kinds of tea that that had the most. Uh, coloring effect on the teeth. Right. 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 So. 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 Uh, is is there any, anything else like you know anything specific that it's really you know? No, that, these are the uh, the ones. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so probably other things, of course, but we have uh, no knowledge of that. They are in different countries. Like I said, there are some in different countries. These uh, that that has to do with the food, mm. right? So 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 like how, how much, uh, how much of the diet you're eating, like the food you're eating, um, like how how important is your diet when it comes to teeth health, like keeping mm. your teeth healthy? To keep the teeth healthy, that's a yeah. different uh, story, actually. Oh, it is. Yes, the the main thing is. When your teeth, when you come to a certain age, like let's say 18 years old, then your teeth doesn't really matter what you eat. They won't get stronger because they're already formed. Okay. But you can weaken them with, if you eat, of course, sugary thing. So the bacteria start eating it. Mm -hmm. Or you, if you eat, and consume sour things, acid, because that can uh, dissolve part of the teeth. We see that often. People that uh, are in sports, for example, who drink all these sports drinks. Mm -hmm. And we see this in people who have a very simple diet, who drink a lot of these sour drinks. And um, sour drinks uh, is a soda or a, yeah. yeah, and sport drinks, mm-hmm. and then people with bulimia they have of, often also this um, eaten up because of they have sour upcoming from right. the stomach, right? Yeah, so you can so you can harm your teeth not just by eating uh, sugar or sugary related food but also sour right is 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 there anything else that's like a real da- danger to the teeth of course you, but that's more in theory if you use and you see that in um, countries um and especially in um uh, non-industrial countries that people eat food that are quite fibrous or like they are um, the flour for example is milled in a stone Mm -hmm. with a stone so you will get like a fine stone into the flour when you eat it it's like a sandpaper right so the tooth gets eaten up tear down much quicker than normal right and we see this if you I've seen um, I saw once a skeleton from um, from the Viking age and that person was died around 40 and he had quite eaten up his teeth much more than we do today because they ate much more fibrous food so they were more tearing and wearing compared to now. Right. We eat much softer food now than before. So, so what do you recommend for keeping your health? Like, what is the thing you can eat to keep your health and your teeth healthy? To keep your tooth healthy is very simple. You just br- brush your teeth 
in the morning and before you go to sleep and then you use floss in between right once a day so if, so if you do all these two things brush regularly and floss regularly hmm. you have a great chance of never getting a hole so so you, you can basically eat what you want as long as you brush your teeth you you'll be fine right and then you can eat a little bit candy and and uh, things in between that doesn't matter right um you, you know I, I was uh, one thing i thought thought about um you know brushing your teeth before you go to sleep that makes a lot of sense to me because you know, you've been eating all day and then you gotta you know clean that up right but in the morning it it to me it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense because because you know you you brush your teeth and then you go to sleep, right? You're not you're not eating anything to the whole night, right? So so like why do you have to brush your teeth in in, in the morning? Because you have already eaten, and when you're eaten in the morning, mm-hmm. cereals for example, right? And things and and maybe some orange juice and things like that, then you have something for the bacteria to eat. Mm-hmm. Okay, and over the night the bacteria has also grown on your teeth. Right. So, in the morning there's a lot of bacteria who is hungry, and when you start eating the, your breakfast, you're feeding them. Right. So after that, they start multiplying even more. So what you do is you clean your teeth so there's no bacteria left on the teeth to get used to to multiply after your breakfast. Right. Hmm. So so and it, it doesn't really matter how good you how how good you you're at brushing teeth. It was all there was always be like a a lot of bacteria left, after, right? After 12 hours, after 8 hours, the thing is bacteria multiply so fast for 8 hours. It's like thousand years in man age. Right. In eight hours, the bacteria has gone through hundreds of generations. Right, yeah, so so that's why it's pretty useful too. Mm. So when you wake up in the morning, your mouth has grown quite a lot of uh, bacteria. <laughs> right, yeah, I, because I, I, I've always, like, you know, been so sort of wondering why that is but right so so it there really comes a lot of new bacteria in the night yes right yeah yeah because the and there's another thing in the morning then you there's another thing because the main main factor in the the useness of the toothpaste is the flow floor right so when you brush your teeth you give the tooth the wanted fluid that it needs that protects it and makes it stronger. Right, so, so, so could you like explain what fluor is? Fluor is, um, is a material that binds to your emalia. Right. That's the surface of the tooth. Okay. So, and it sits there and makes like a, like a polish a little bit. So when acid comes there, it sticks to the and protect your uh, your teeth, so it's it it doesn't dissolve as 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 easily as before, because the fluor iron wants to sit and stick to your tooth. So it protects your teeth. So if you get a new fluor layer in the morning and then you get another one before you go to sleep, so it's a two times a day. Right. And that will strengthen the outer surface of your tooth. But uh, k- what if I brush three times a day? Would that be better or worse? Or it doesn't matter. You, you, it's they've done all kinds of um, research on this thing: two times, three times, one times, and uh, the optimal was two times. Right. So we just keep it, doing it like that. No, nothing more, nothing less. 
Okay. So if you brush your teeth two times a day, floss it one time a day, then there's a great chance that you will never ever need a hole in your teeth. Right. And you also said flossing. Yes. Uh, you know, I have a lot, a lot of friends that um, uh, say that they're never flossed in right. their life. Right. And have zero holes. Right. Right. So, so is flossing really important, or is that, is that something you can skip? It's important over time. Right. That means that because there's a one place you can't brush, you can't get your hair from the toothbrush, and that's between the teeth. Okay. So slowly, it will. What happens? Not to all of us, but to some of us. In between, where two teeth lie together and make a surface slowly the bacteria can survive there so when you when you brush doesn't matter how well you do there's always going to be some residues of bacteria between the teeth and that's there that these bacteria can slowly over a long period of time dissolve dissolve your teeth and make a hole and you won't notice it until they're quite big right so we see this often when people who haven't been to a dent office dentist's office over like five years and say there's no hole then we take an x-ray and we can see on the x-ray that there are whole, all, whole, small holes all over the place exactly at the proximal where they t touch each other the tooth which indicates that he, he has not been flossing right and you can often you see it immediately you, 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 you tell the, the patient you haven't flossed and they go, what? How do you know? <laughs> because it's all on the, all between the holes, or between the teeth, where they touch each other, where that toothbrush can't come. Right, and, and is that also something that you'd be fixing, or a regular dentist would be fixing? A regular dentist. Right, right. I am more when it's irreversible, or in a traumatic situation where the tooth broke, or or people fall on their faces and break their teeth or something. Right. Damage the teeth, and that's when we come in. Right. And we try to fix that and eliminate the infection. And then the dentist, the other one, take take over and do the rest. Right. But so, so, so you know, when we're brushing our teeth, uh, there's a lot of different types of toothbrushes, right? Yes, yes. There's like, you know, a circular... There's like the other sh shape. I don't know. Right. Like there's, there's a lot of shapes and types of toothbrushes. But it's right. so like there's an electric, non-electric. I think even it's all like a ultra something. Anyway, but uh, um, is is there a better type? Is the is there like one type of tooth toothbrushes that are like way better? Or? There, uh, if we take the difference between the manual one and the electro uh, electricity electric electric with a motor on yeah the thing is this if you brush your teeth very very well then if you have a the the vibring with a motor mm -hmm. you in theory can clean your teeth a little bit better right just a marginal better in percentage but in average People who buy these motorized toothbrushes usually, overall, brush less better than normal people with manual one. And the reason is, those who brush with manual, they just do it like they're used to. But when you buy uh, with a motor vibrating, it you 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 tend to rely on that one so you brush not as good as you should right but if you use the the motorized one decently and do it well you have a better chance of cleaning you, you see the difference yeah right so, so it is actually like marginally better it's marginally better but, if but if you use it well right but you have tendency to use it worse because you want 
the motor to do the cleaning. So you get more careless. Right. So so it's it's really the, the people using the electric that are failing. Yes. Right. Right. And then then you come to another one. And that is if you have a, the manual one, you know, the labor. Yeah. Then there are usually three types. That's soft, medium, and hard. And it has been shown that it, it has a little bit about the angle where it touches the tooth. It should be around 45. That, that has to do with the cleaning effect. And the softer it is, the better. And the more tighter there is. So the thing is here, because the bacteria doesn't lie very strong on the glue to the tooth. It doesn't adhere to qu quite strong. It's quite loose. So you don't need these hard brushes to take uh, clean out the, um, the, t the bacteria. Right. So it's better to use soft with a lot of hairs. Okay. And right angle about 45. Then you get the most uh, effective cleaning. We just we just want to swap away the bacteria that lies on the surface of the teeth. Nothing more. And, it, and it, they're quite loose on. They don't adhere quite hard. So it's it's it. We don't need these hard hard. Uh, stiff uh, hair, hairy brushes they just ruin the uh, surrounding uh, um, tissue around the tooth right softer the better though you feel like it doesn't clean well it does so so the thing I wanted to ask and, you and then you what? then you have all kinds of these t tooth brushes I've seen this over the last 30 years they show all kinds of different forms. They have so, 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 sometimes it's square, sometimes it's a round helicic with two heads and even three heads, and 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 in different directions, different stiffness. When it comes to to, uh, to the end, it's the man who uses the hand that uses the toothbrush that's the most important. Right. It's always like this and has been like this and will be like this. So it doesn't matter what kind of tip. That's not the one that decides how well it's cleaned. It's you. Right. And how thorough you are. And systematic. So so the the thing that I wondered about was um I keep seeing these two um Yeah. Uh, I with, know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, like rubber things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Use, useless. So that's all useless. Uh, it should stimulate this, this bullshit. <laughs> okay. Right, right. So, you know, it, it doesn't matter what tooth, what toothbrush you have. No. It's, it's all the the ideal toothbrush is soft with a lot of hairs and not too big. So you can go all the way back, way back to your teeth. Right. With soft edges so it doesn't hurt when it. And you can go all the way to the back, uh, back is behind the last tooth back. So it's quite easy. But they have these fancy things, different colors, different forms, different direction with the hair going crisscrossed. And it's just a bullshit. Right. It's nice to see, nice fun to see, but it has nothing to do with the total um, cleaning effect at all. Right. So at least marginal. Yeah, right. and is there any difference between? You know, I've used a lot of different uh, dental floss. Yeah, there's a difference between dental floss. There is. Right. There's thin. There's a thick. There's puffy. It's like a wool, like a thread. There are different kinds, and it depends on. Some people have a very tight area between teeth. Then you use the thinner one. Some people have a rather wide gap between. Then you need a thicker one. Right. So it depends on that. And some people have like a rough fillings. Then you need a different kind of thread that doesn't get caught in it. So you just find the one you feel is comfortable. Right. So so, so it, it, it 
no type is really better than the other one except like for use especially it's more or less what fits you and what you're comfortable with right that's what it, it, the one you're comfortable with is the one you will you will use and that's what we need right because when the, the floss goes between it um, it cleans out the bacteria and erupts the formation of the bacteria and that's enough so right some like thick some like thin it just just matter of taste and an anatomic form of the teeth and uh while we're still talking about brushing your teeth and tooth toothbrushes uh i wanted to ask you about uh your tongue yes right it's a pretty central part in your mouth right yeah so I, i've heard some people say you know that brushing your tongue as well would is useful like yeah it's very important actually the tongue is the biggest organ in your mouth that's where the digestion starts right the digestion starts in your mouth and all your food goes th- basically th- through the past the tongue and the tongue is like um like the alps it's a mountain reaches so when you eat a lot of bacteria lies there it's unbelievable amount of bacteria that that's in the grooves in your on the, on your surface of the tongue especially on the on the upper and in that area there's a lot of food that will go down there when you eat and get nutrition from milk and all and, and juices and uh, because the digestion has already started there and in in that tongue there are a lot of a lot of bacteria and these bacteria are, are good to get away by scraping it and you will notice it that especially when you wake up in the morning you often feel like you you had a bad breath you have a bad smell in your mouth right and that's usually comes from the bacteria from the tongue so if you uh, if you scrape it just before you go to sleep you will you will notice a great difference the day after because you 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 can you can uh, remove about 70% of the bacteria with a, with a tongue scraper that lies on the tongue it's quite it's quite a, when you start if you, in some certain times it can be a quite large amount of bacteria it, that's where the most of the bacteria lies. Right. So 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 uh should you use your normal toothbrush or is it like do you have a separate brush? Uh, no, or? this is separate. Uh, sc- there are unbelievable many scrapes. Uh you can tongue scrape you can use. And there are different types. Some works for one type works for this from you and another type for some others. So People just have to find the right one. On the net, if you Google it, you, there's hundreds of types. And um, scraping the tongue has been a tradition in uh, uh, for hundreds of years, both in India and the Middle East. Um, it's been a tradition to scrape the tongue as a part of their uh, hygienic... Uh, so... There are unbelievable many types of uh, different uh, tongue scrapes. Right. Yes. So, so, so that uh, that is actually so, so. You don't use your toothbrush. You use a separate right. scraper. Right. Yes. Yes. Um. It, it doesn't matter if you do it before or after or. Now that's um that's matter of opinion. Right. Um. I would think I would, I would. If I if it would me, I would scrape it before I brush my teeth. So you take away all the you take away the bacteria before you start brushing because in some toothpastes you have a like a sink um, that's set uh, as one of the, the, the parts in the in a toothpaste and that sink kills bacteria. So if you have already taken the seventy percent of the bacteria. So the sink will then kill the rest, or at least part of it. What do you, what do you mean by sink? Could you please explain that again? S- sink. That's a metal. It's a it's a material that's in the. Um, it's starting to be in quite many of these um, 
toothpaste is. Right. And what it does, it kills bacteria. So it doesn't. It so when you're brushing your teeth, it's not you're not just only removing, but you're killing bacteria also. Right. And it and what it's used in in uh, toothpastes because then you will get less bad breath. So if you've already cleaned seventy percent of the bacteria from your tooth before you start using a toothpaste, I think it's going to be more effective. Okay. Because you've already removed seventy percent, but it's more. Th this is more like theory. Right, because that's really in in interesting. Because I've never, when I'm talking about brushing brushing my teeth to with my friends, like I've never heard anybody talk about brushing their tongues, right? Oh. But that is really important. Well, yes, it is, and you, uh, and it's also because you won't get bad breath. Right. So everyone knows someone who has bad breath. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 eighty percent of the bad breath comes from the tongue. Right. So so so. But if you could only either brush your teeth or like scrape your tongue, like wh which one would be most important? Well, it's a different thing. Okay. Because when you're scraping your tongue, it has very little effect on your teeth. Right. And, it, and brushing your teeth has very little effect on your tongue. It's yeah, two yeah, separate sense. thing. Yeah. So you should just do both. <laughs> okay. Okay. Scrape your tongue takes less than five seconds. Okay. So. And and that's also the most effective to effective to to get better breath. Yes. But it uh, but it really doesn't do anything with your teeth or minimal. But uh, how how about um, uh, you know mouthwash? Mouthwash is okay. It's mostly to make you feel good. It usually has like a flavor. Yeah. So you, but many of these mouthwashes have um, fluor, and that's that strengthens your teeth, the outer surface of the teeth, and some of them have this sink. So that sink will do kill bacteria also. Right. So so if you don't have time to brush your teeth in the morning, you you, you can do that as an alternative. Or yes, but it it shouldn't be every uh, day. No, it shouldn't be systematic. Right. But in between, it's all right. 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 So what if I don't have time, and I've seen people just taking taking um, a toothpaste. And just you know, you know, take that in your mouth and you use the water and basically use that as mouthwash. Yeah, yeah. In theory, because you Does get a little work? bit, you, you you get fluor from it. Right. Yeah. So it, it, in theory, it should, but you shouldn't recommend it over time. Right. So, but it's better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Right. And when you say kill bacteria, I mean, do you mean kill all bacteria, or is it like, or or is it like, oh, it doesn't kill bad. Oh, it doesn't kill good, but it kills bad. No, it, it, what the... Like, like the, I'm guessing there's a lot of good bacteria in your mouth as well, not just bad ones, right? They're mostly good. Mostly good, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. So when you're killing bacteria, you're killing the good ones as well. You, yes, you're killing everything. Right. But you never, you're never able to kill all. Right. You're only going to remove so-and-so much percent. Right. Like a tongue, you can you can never remove more than seventy five. When you're cleaning your teeth, you probably remove eighty, ninety percent, maybe ninety five. But there's always going to be some areas you can't clean. That's just fact of life. Yeah, you just have to accept that. Yeah. Uh, right. So, a couple of, the other another thing that I want to talk to you about was pain. Yes. Right, because how 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 long did you you were a normal dentist for for a while? Yes. Like for how long? For how long? What? You, were you like a normal dentist? Um, fifteen years. Fifteen years, right? So, you know, sometimes I just feel like pain for like ten seconds, then it's gone. Yes. Never to be seen again. Right. Right. Yes. And you know. 
everyone has experienced that. I yeah. think uh, most yeah. of us have. Right, but th- how do I know when to to go to the dentist? Like when the pain is too much, or like when I, there might be something wrong here. Like, I need to fix. Of course, usually all of us should go at least once a year or once 18 months, one and a half year. Right. You should go regu- regularly. That's just how it is. And then the, that your dentist can look over and, and even take a x-rays. So that, that, that uh, is, if you do that, you're in a, it's very little chance that you will get any big holes. So, but then you have this unexplainable thing. Sometimes just people uh, get pain in your teeth and no one knows why you have to root fill it or it's an infection. It may be fracture. It may be some kind of um, genetic disorder there that no one saw. A lot of uh, unexplainable things also. But the thing is, if you go regularly, it's very seldom. But of course, you can get a traumatic also. You can get a fracture in the teeth. Even when you were 12 years and you didn't notice anything. And then 10 years later, suddenly you get a pain in the teeth. So that can happen also. But on average, person who goes normally once once uh, every other year to a dentist shouldn't uh, and use it and brushes two times a day and use floss regularly doesn't have to worry about these things. Right. But then you have also but but of course if you have some disease, some drugs, some drugs can. Uh, have related to more more uh, holes in your teeth for example some um, cancer treatments radiations things like that so but that's seldom right right so so you know when i have like a pain for like 10 seconds and it's gone it's nothing to worry about no i wouldn't worry about it but if it comes again and again right Absolutely. Then you should go. Yeah. But then, especially if you, you're eating something sweet, sugar, sour, you get these pains, you know, going right up to your brain mm. for 10 seconds or 15, for two or three times, I would, then you should absolutely talk to them. Right. So, so, so when you're eating candy and you feel real pain. Yes. Then you should check that out. Absolutely. Right. But, uh, but these 10 seconds once and nothing for the next 10 years, don't worry about that one. Right. Be- because I, I've I've experienced some pain. Everyone has. While, while, while eating candy. But that's like, you know, that might be one, like a tooth. One tooth, right? I have a lot of pain. And then I just stop and it's good. You know, like when I stop eating, I'll be fine. Yes. Right. Is that something I should look into, maybe? If it comes again, yes. Right, right. But, but let's say the next day I eat more candy of the same thing. Well, and, no, but... and it's not that tooth, it's another tooth. That's seldom. That's, that, that's rare. Yeah. Right. But if you f- feel it's starting to come again and again, absolutely, then you would go to a dentist and take a picture. Be- because... It... Often when I eat like really sour candy and I only eat sour candy, I may have like this sort of pain in like one tooth, um, th- like that time, and then I'll be fine the next day and like th- everything will be fine, right? But um, and then n- n- the next time I eat really sour candy, there's like there's always like a different place. It's never the same place. Do you, do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, like I say, then you should ask yourself, when did you when did you have an um, examination with a dentist? Was it half a year ago or one year ago? Right. I would think a little bit like that. Right, right. Hmm. Um, so, but what if it's... 
what if it's like really painful for like a day and then the next day is completely fine if it's getting painful something is wrong Okay. We're not talking about 10 seconds and that nothing more. Yeah, it's I'm talking about like a whole day maybe. Yeah, oh, then I would con- uh, contact the dentist. Yeah. And it, or it's pulsating, you know, if you can't drink, cold or hot. Absolutely. Right. It, if, even if it disappears the next day, you should still yeah, check it out. You have nothing to lose to go to the dentist and let him look at it. Right. And then I'll just finish with that. Uh, and, and, and there's always a people we see it sometimes that people have really good huge hole in infection and people don't notice it so it's not everyone who gets pain right some people get really huge holes and, and feel nothing so it's, it's really strange sometimes but but um, I was just gonna say something right, right so the thing about feeling in your teeth right because when I was younger, I couldn't really eat that much ice cream, like or, or like get ice cream on my teeth. But now it's like completely fine. Yeah, the thing is that um, you have much more sensitivity when you're younger. Right. The pulp, we call it the pulp. That's a nerve. That organ is bigger in uh, in the children than in um, in the grown ones, and it gets smaller and smaller over time. So it's much more sensitive in the beginning. But after 15, 16 years of age, it gets smaller and smaller and you you feel it less and less. Right. So they're less and less sensitive over time. Right. So so is that only due to age? Or? Yes, it's 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 related. Right. It happens to all of us. But, we get less sensitive. But even over even time. even when I'm let's say I'm trying to chew ice cream, right? Mm. I mean I don't usually usually do that, but let's say I'm trying to chew ice cream. You know I've gotten ice cream on like my teeth uh, in the back, it's completely fine. But when I get just like a tiny bit of cold, when I, when I feel like there's kind of there's cold on my front teeth, like on the bottom, it, I just I just basically collapse, right? They're more sensitive. Right. Very often. Not always. It yeah. depends on the person. But on an average, the, the front teeth are more sensitive, sensitive than the back teeth. Especially in younger patients. Younger people. The older you get, the less sensitive it will be. The teeth. Right. And is, is sensitivity something that's Good or bad? Neither. It's just. It's just there. Of course, the sensitivity is good if you have a hole. It's like a alarming system to right. tell you now you have to go to a dentist. Something is wrong. But uh, these, uh, but there's always one and one person who has. We call it hypersensitivity. You know, you, you get ice cream or you, you eat something, doesn't matter what it is. You know, it's, you've seen these ads in the in the TV. Yeah. So you can buy these sensitive uh, toothpastes and they work because some people, we are, we, are, we are not all the same. Some people are more sensitive than others. That's just how it is. Right. And is there anything you can do about that? I could, let's say I'm really sensitive to ice cream. Like if I just eat ice cream and just like continuously put ice in my teeth, like will they get less sensitive or is that something that I'm stuck No, with? no, they won't. But uh, the age, the older you get, you will usually get less sensitive. But then you can use uh, these new uh, toothpastes and they're quite effective over time. Usually it takes few few weeks or months to work. But people, there are many people who have a very, uh, has successfully lost their sens- uh, hypersensitivity with a good uh, sensitive toothpaste. Because there are crystals in it that uh, cl- uh, closes the sensitivity t- tunnels that are giving the sensitivity on your teeth. Right, so, so those, those um, 
sensitive toothpaste can actually help you yes they with do. becoming less sensitive yes and that's a good thing that's a good thing right so you want to have as little sensitivity as possible right but still enough so you can feel pain you will feel it pain in the end if you, if it's get quite near the pulp right mm. right so 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 do you, do you want to feel nothing at all or do you want to feel something at least something I don't want to feel anything. Right, so so that's like the best you can get is when you feel nothing. Yes. Right, right. Uh so but that but that's not uh that has not, not, nothing to do with health. You can have perfectly healthy teeth that are really sensitive. Right. Right. There's a two difference. You can get a similar if it's a hole. If you have a huge hole, you can get a similar super hypersensitivity, but um, but that will uh, if you go to a dentist in a check, he will notice it. Right. Right. So 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 you shouldn't if you have sensitive teeth or you have, don't have sensitive teeth at all, you shouldn't really worry. Not really. If if the dentist say that you don't have any holes and you have sensitivity, then you just need um, toothpaste that takes the sensitivity out. Right, and, and those actually work. Yes, the okay. newest one are really good. Actually, I've I've, I've been seeing reviews, and they 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 really work. Right. Right. So, so. You know, the, the next time I eat ice cream and um, my front teeth really, you know, kind of hurts by, by the ice, I shouldn't worry, right? No. no you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no. all good. After 10 years, you won't notice anything. Right. But uh, is that in every case or could some be sometimes be that you get more sensitive? Very seldom. It, there's every, you, can, you always find some kinds of these strange cases. Right. That uh, something goes wrong or something, no one knows why. But uh, the usual thing is, the, the, old, the older you get, the less sensitive your teeth gets. Right. That, that's. But of course, you can always, you can always find one in one person that um, no one knows why suddenly get worse out of nowhere. And we have these patients that comes once in a while that have pain, often called phantom pain. They have really, really horrible pain, and we don't find anything wrong with the tooth. So that's a neurological thing that sometimes we see, and no one knows why. Right. It's called phantom pain. There are things we can try to fix, but um, very often it's very hard and very hard to diagnose. And sometimes we can't do anything. And some people, they even get their teeth extracted. And they still have pain in the area afterwards. So it's it's, it's a little bit tricky, that one. But it's seldom. Very seldom. All right. So, so another thing that I really wanted to uh, ask you about, it's kind of off topic, but... Uh, yeah, 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 right, right. I just totally forgot. But, you know, um, I've heard that you can brush too good. Yes. Like, is that true? Like, yes. could you please like, explain what that is? The thing is, you have a thin layer that protects your teeth. It's called emalia. Yeah, right. It's quite strong, but it's very thin. It's less than half a millimeter where it's thinnest and up to one and a half, two millimeter where it's thickest. It's very strong. It's nearly as strong as a diamond. Not as strong as a diamond, but diamond is number 10 in the grade. Emalia is next strongest and has a nine. So it's quite strong. Right. Um, but it's very thin. So if you use toothbrush that has really hard hair 
a hard one it it over time it will start you know it will um, deteriorate that layer yeah and 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 also if you have a toothbrush toothpaste with a very kosher you know sand articles crystal articles then you might get polished through the amalia and behind the amalia is we call it dentine that's much much softer so if you get through the amalia then your then it, you you can brush quite quickly and disform the tooth because the underlayer is much more uh, weaker against abrasion but it's seldom it's, it's mostly those people who brush like two to three to four times a day there are people who brush more than two times a day then you see this this erosion and abrasion from the, the too much toothbrush it's, it's not often but you see it regularly right so so you can actually do harm by brushing your teeth over too brushing much. yes yes you can over a long time of periods right but it can you also do something uh i've also heard these stories about oh if you, if you like drink especially like juice yes apple juice yes orange juice sports juice right if you drink that in the morning and then you go brush your teeth like straight afterwards does that have any effect very little because the fluoride will protect it again right so 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 i heard this story about um this dude that just brushed her brushed the teeth normally but would get holes be- because i mean the theory was that because uh he, he always drank like juice right before brushing his teeth in the morning but but that horseshit i don't know it, it depends it depends on how good his uh, buffering system is also in your in your mouth it's hard to say but the usual thing is that, that if you drink too much soda too much this juice apple orange they can be quite sour so they can dissolve uh, part of your emollia over especially if you're drinking this you know day in and day out so but the fluor helps but if it's too much it it this will uh, deteriorate your emollia and loosen it up dissolve it over long but we're talking about long time of period of of uh, drinking sour drinks some people drink you know one two or three liters of these drinks especially many people that are active in um, physical active sorry your mic was there you go there you go physical active and they they, you know like sports they you know they exercise one to two times a day and they drink you know one or two bottles while they're doing it that's not good for your teeth over over a long time of period right but can you drink something that's good like milk or something or even water water is, is best of course water's the best thing uh, it's neutral right. it's, it's neither sour or anything not basic so it's just neutral so, so that's like the best thing you can drink right for your teeth is just right. water yeah hmm right uh, so um hold back on the top with teeth um you know I've seen a lot of people have like fake teeth, right? Like one golden tooth in the far back, or like, like some gold on their tooth or something. Right. I'm not talking about like rappers. We'll get into that later. But so I've had a hole personally, right? And they just filled that up, or you know, did whatever they did. I didn't need to get a new tooth. So, so like, when do you need a new tooth, and when do you just fill that up? If that now, now you're talking about the crown. We call it. It's called crown. Right, which is what ca- or caps. Right. Um, the reason you use that is, it's either if you have um, had so many holes in that tooth, there's so little 
little to, to build on, then you need something to, you know, you like cover the whole tooth. Then you, you then you use these crowns or caps. Right. And and nowadays they're mostly used made out of a porcelain. Different type of porcelain. So they're white, not metal or gold. So it before is, it was yeah. gold, but no one uses it anymore. Now it's everyone wants just a porcelain because it's white. Right. And they can mimic the tooth, anatomic form of a tooth. So that's one reason you use it when you have little substance, you know, so you need to build it up in a crown. Or if you want to change your appearance, like if you want to, if you see, you want to be a model or movie star, you need to have whiter teeth, bigger teeth, nicer, less crooked. Then you then you can get these thin uh, porcelain veneers to make them nicer, so you have a nicer smile. So you put that on top of your tooth. Yes, so you get more uh, creative forming of it. Right. So, so so that's what famous people are are doing when they're all of a sudden their teeth becomes great. Right. You've seen this. Right. Before and after things. Yeah. So 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 yeah. that's when they put. Do they put it on or like around or do they just fix it like? It depends. There are different types. Either total cover, will to, uh, cover the whole tooth or just a layer outside in the front. So it depends. It depends um, on the anatomic form, bite relations and things like that. And how skilled the dentist is. A lot of things to consider when that happens. I've actually always wondered like how how they did that, but um, could it also be beneficial to um, kind of a I don't know like if they're too big instead of putting anything on, could you like you know scrape a bit of the tooth away? Yeah, but very seldom tooth are big. There usually people feel that they're too small. Right. Because if you scrape them down, you're taking the strong amalia away because it's only one, one and a half to two millimeters. After that, then you come to a softer material. And that's not good. So it's very seldom that we grind down teeth if they're too strong, long. That's very seldom. Yeah, and you, re you really do not want to do that. No. Not really. Right. In most cases, at least. But, did so let's say you've done your teeth, right? You've all of a sudden got these great teeth. Do they feel like normal teeth, or does, do they feel like you always have something like weird in your mouth? And you just... most people think it's feel it's yeah rather normal. Okay. Similar to the old one, yeah. Usually. Okay, it's always small. You can. They say, you know, sometimes they're a little bit softer than uh, than the the old one. But it's it's hard to say. So usually when when it, when it people have had their caps for a few months, they don't they don't feel any difference. Right. So so but how how about a uh just how about how tooth like a whole tooth the whole tooth yeah so when the whole tooth is just rotten and you need to like replace to get a whole new one yes like how, how does that feel does does that have the same feeling as normal a normal tooth or does that feel like something well it, it depends a little bit what's done you can have braids you can have like a implant that's a screw that screws up in your bone or you can have a bridge All right so it depends on that and it depends on the patient also some people don't feel any difference and some people always never satisfied with what they got so it's it's just um different experience but most patients they 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 don't care and they don't after a few months they don't feel any different at all that's really interesting Mm. Uh, could you also just like took your makeup like 
off because it's always oh it's it's always like your glasses that's the problem it's it's making sound but anyway so so also another thing that I really wanted to ask you about was you've seen these rapper grills right or like the fake yeah. like gold hmm. teeth in rappers right right uh so I, I think that's like a thing they put on right that's something you put around your teeth which you can very take often, on and off very often yeah right not always but very often yeah, yeah. uh did, could you like talk about that for a second like does that damage the tooth the teeth or anything or is that good if, bad? if you use it in short period of time it doesn't matter right and if, if you clean your teeth in between what well, i mean if you having this day after day after day after day then I would be a little bit suspicious. Without taking it off. Yes, right. because yeah. a bacteria will always come in between there and they will live in a good environment there, protect it from outer environment because they're just, um, because of the layer of this gold thing. But I don't think these people keep it for too much. It's usually something that you can loosen off, take off. Right. So, it's not easy to have when you're eating and so, so forth. It's most mostly for the show. Just, you know, when they're taking pictures and, and smiling and... So, usually it doesn't harm your teeth because they take it in between off. In the sessions where they can clean their teeth. But is it, is it possible to get that permanent somehow? Yeah, but it's like a normal crown. Some people do that. Uh, you can see that in between. Some of these... Uh, and usually they only have like one or two teeth. But they, they, you can have a gold all the way. Yeah, yeah. And Without... Uh, and, and and then it's, it's permanent. Yeah. Yeah. But is... is What does that do? What does that mean? Like, is that... Does that damage? Can, can no, that... you weaken the tooth because you have to you have to grind down the tooth so there's a place for the gold to to lie on. Right. But after you put it on and uh, and glued it on again, it's it has weakened the whole structure a little bit. But um, usually, the long term doesn't matter. Right. So it's it's just like. It's just like getting a new tooth, basically. Right, yeah, 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 it's exactly the same. But, so, when you get a new, like, fake tooth, right, where, does that also get holes? It can, it, it's a lesser chance, but in the margin, between the tooth, where the tooth ends and the crown starts, that's where there's a danger you get um, uh, carriers. But it's seldom, but you can see it in between. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like when the whole tooth has to be replaced. Yes. Uh, so so you, you, you can still get holes in that, like, ceramic... Uh, uh, not in the, the crown itself, but where they end, where, they, where the margins are. Right, right. Oh, yeah, so so, so where the... Tooth where you, ends and the yeah. cap starts. Yeah, but, but not in no, the teeth no, itself. No, no, no. Right. That's very seldom. It's, uh, hardly. Yeah, but 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 does that even matter? Mm, yeah, it matters because then you c can't see it. Oh, but if 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 your hole if you get a hole in your fake tooth, does yeah. does that? You no, know, you don't get the you don't get a hole in the self not in the ceramic. No. Because it, the bacteria can't eat that. Yeah, but even if you get a hole there, would that matter? Yeah, it matters because then you can get it into a nerve, and then you get infection. So it matters, yes, of course it matters. But it, it doesn't happen because there's nothing to eat for bacteria. It's yeah, but there's some there's some part of the tooth that's still there behind. That's a danger. Yeah, right, right. Mm. Right, but so so but now I'm talking about the yeah the material. Yeah, I'm talking no, about no, the material no, no, itself. No, no, right. that's, no, no. Right, but so. it can fracture though. Yeah. But do you have to replace that every so and so years, or is that something? Yeah, you keep for it life? depends. It's, uh, 
it should last 20 years plus minus 20 years and then you yeah. have to replace it yeah not always but sometimes it depends how big was the tooth what tooth is it how what do you eat it depends on many things no i i always thought that it was for life but no it depends on many things it depends on the like I told you, is it uh, what teeth is it? How much was left of the teeth? Mm -hmm. And how good is the dentist? And, uh, uh, and the dental technician, how good was he? There are many factors. And which type of crown? Was it gold? Was it porcelain? What kind of porcelain? There's a lot of things that counts. So, but, but the average is probably around 20 years. A little bit depends on the teeth and the form. And a lot of teeth can last for 50 years. And there are some teeth caps that only last for 10 or even 5. I've seen that. So you never know. So, so, but why do you have to switch though? Uh, like, why do you have to change? Is that, is that because it's become loose? For example. If there's a little, it, it depends on, is it in the front? Is it a football player who, who broke their, his two front teeth? And then he gets another slam in the face three years later, for example. Mm -hmm. But like the average person. Yeah. It, it, he has to change also like after about 20 years, maybe. Plus minus. Yeah. But yeah, yeah and, and that's be and that's when it might become loose or it, it can be all kinds of things. It gets loose or it gets ugly, you know, discolored. It can break, part of it breaks, you can get a hole around the edges, a lot of things. Different things. It can loose loosen because of there was not enough retention. Or it's a bad material, so you you never know. There's all kinds of things that can happen in twenty years. It's a hard, rough job to be a tooth in the mouth. I mean, you're chewing three thousand times a day. You're eating all kinds of things. You're biting things. It's a harsh environment. You know, it's cold and hot, sour, sweet. So. It's unbelievable that you can have a crown caps that can last 20 years if you think about it. Right. It's beaten, you know, three times a day mm. when you eat. It's a lot of force when you eat and bite. Mm. But how, how, how about the gums? I think I think it's called the gums. Yes. Uh, is could you, could, is there anything worth knowing about those? Like you know, if, if right, so, mine have been bleeding once or twice. Is that something? Bleeding mean infection. Right. In, infection. In, in the teeth or in the gum. In the gum. Right. And if you have a like a chronic situation, it will eat the bone around the tooth over time. So the ideal is not to bleed. If the gum bleeds over long, over a long time of period, you need to you need to think about it because then you have a gum disease, right? And if you have that over a long time of period, it will eat the bone around the tooth, and then in the end you will loosen the tooth will loosen. And even though you start cleaning around the gum line, then it's too late because the bone won't grow back again. So it's very important that we always, that's part of the floss also. The floss cleans down the gum line. And when you, when you put the floss down and it bleeds, that means you haven't flossed often enough. Right. Because often if you don't floss for like a one week or so, when you start flossing again, it starts bleeding for one to two days after you start uh, flossing. And then afterwards it slowly, disappears and in the end you don't bleed anymore 
that's as it, uh, it should be because if you have bacteria down there it will um, start bleeding again so bleeding means that you have infection infectious gum line and you should try to prevent that and how do you do that you you use floss or some of these um, tooth sticks tooth sticks between the tooth oh right yeah yeah right and and, and you should be fine yes so so the most normal way to detect if you have a gum disease, disease is is bleeding. bleeding yes right and it usually comes with older age the older you get the more chances that you have a bleeding gum it's seldom in youngsters so to speak Well, uh, so right now we've been talking a lot about you as a dentist, right? But you also said that you were a teacher at the, or a professor, or like... Teacher. Right, at the university. Yes. University. Yes. In Bergen. Yes. Right. Uh, so, um, after... 15 years in as, as a teacher right uh, do you see you, you know what do, do, do you think that it is hard to become a dentist yes it is because there are three things you have to be good in you have to be good in knowledge that's one thing you have to be good in um, materials and things like that. That's knowledge. You read by book. Then you have to be good in your hands to do the the job. Right. And the third thing is very important also, and that is communication. Between who? You and the patient. That's very important that you understand the patient and the patient understands you and you can uh, information information give him the patient information what's needed and what's good and what's bad understand that you need to practice so the patient feels secure in your hands and doesn't have to be scared about pain or discomfort and trust you and know that you're uh, well educated and uh, so forth so this, these are the three things main things but is is there anything that's more important or is everything just equal the probably of course the knowledge and how you perform is the most of course the most important right but it is but the psychological part and the social part is more important than people really do, do credit for. Because we are human. So there are one fourth of the people are scared to go to dentists. So. And why is that? No one knows. Many, of course, have bad experience when they were children. So that's one part of it. Uh, some people are just scared. So you never know what's the main reason. <laughs> that's the dog coming. All right, so, so, so you know, in your 15 years, has anything changed? as as far as the education go it goes like you know it, it, it when you started did you educate people in a different manner than what you do now 
not really. It's just the same. Yeah. The only different is, of course, we we have changed the equipment a little bit. Right, because there's technology. always some there's always something new coming, more accurate, more easier, more predictable things, more predictable materials. There are small things that happens every five years, and in the end, it over time it will it changes. It does, but um, it's, there's no revelation, so to speak. Right, it's always like small evolution at a time. Yeah, the, materi the materials are better. It's easier, more safer, but it's 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 small steps. It comes in small steps all the time. So you always have to be a little bit on the edge. If you don't, if you don't read anything, and don't go to meetings over ten years, you start falling behind. So to speak. So it is really important for dentists to be updated. Absolutely. Updated, yeah. Yeah. Because you know you have to, it. It's very seldom, like I say, it's a huge revolution. It comes in steps, small, small steps, but over like ten year, over a decade. You, you see the difference. There's a different uh, what people are using now and for like for fifteen, ten to fifteen years ago. It's not a huge difference, but it is a difference. Right. So, but, uh, but do you remember any like? Do you remember any radical changes? Like, oh, now we have the most radical right. changes in my uh, since I when I was educated, we used amalgam, which is what um, a metal, okay, filling material. No one uses that more with a. Uh, we don't use that anymore. Now it's all composites and plastic. Okay. For example. And the crowns were made of gold and metals. Now they're all pure porcelain, more or less. So there's a different, quite a different now. So that's mostly probably the most revolutionized in the dentistry is from going from these amalgam fillings that were made out of um, silver to composite. That are uh, plast plast plastic. And do you see any? Do you have you heard about any like things that might come up? Like oh, we can use lasers that lasers now, for instance, or anything that you might think can become it widespread. It comes every every five years. There's always something new. Right, but do you yeah. see anything like new coming? No, not really. The late uh, this. Probably around yeah, 15, 15 years ago, there was a lot of these lasers, for example, like you mentioned. Laser here, laser there. But now it's no one uses it anymore. Very little, very narrowed field, actually. But everyone was talking about this is going to be the future. But, but it didn't it, turn no, out. No, it didn't. Not really. It's, it's a little bit used, but not, nothing compared to what the people estimated. 15 years ago or 20 years ago. So that's just how it is. And um, what type of uh, students are you getting? Like, like, is is dentistry hard, like competitive? Or can anybody become a dentist? No, it's very hard. You, you, you need to have a really good grades. Right, and this is by the way, this is in Bergen, Norway, yeah, or or yeah, is this yeah. everywhere? Mostly everywhere. Right. Okay. Um, it's one of the toughest one. It's it's dentistry and and medical. These are very tough ones. It's only very few that can apply. Is that good? I'm not sure. Um, I wish we could choose a little bit more normal people also so <laughs> to speak it's, it's it it's good to have a like a, a widespread and the problem is also the trend we have seen in in the in the western world here that uh, it's mostly girls it's around 80 percent girls 
which is getting into the academically yeah. more competitive yeah. studies. Yeah, like medicine, right, and dentistry. So, 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 so your students are majority. A majority of them are female. Yes, right. And has been for uh, over the last fifteen years. <coughs> so, I'm not sure if that's a good, uh, good or bad. I would I would have would I would like to have more uh, boys males I think it's good to uh, I think it's too much 80% Oh so it's 80% Yeah around 80% on girls it, it, Is that from statistic or that's like you, what you would No it's assume? average that's average here Right So so where you teach 80% of Yeah plus minus little girls bit could be 75 or sometimes 80 it's, it's between 75 and 80 right and and that's just because of the academic it seems like the school content. system is just for some reason fits better to women they get higher grades right right but but i'm i'm, I'm talking about uh the reason why they're more in dentistry specifically i think that uh, yeah they 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 choose these in the health, healthy related, right, and they also have, and they also have better grades. Or, yes. Or, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're better grades, and they they and they tend to apply into the health, like medicine, to be a doctor's, right. or dentistry. But uh, did you see any, like, between f uh, female and male? students like is there any difference or is all the, just the same just the same no there's always some difference there, there is and uh, i think it's just nice to if you have more if you have more equal between you get more like a, a right dynamic uh, it's the same if there are too many boys I think it's good to have more, you know, 50-50 or, or, or 60-40. When it's 80-20, it's, it's getting a little bit more uh, mono, 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 yeah. yeah, right. So I would, uh, I would prefer a uh, little bit more, more balanced between uh, male and female. But is but do you see any like discrimination or anything? No, no. It's, it's, just, it's all equal, right? Yeah, it's just. Um, I think it's better for the dynamic. Right. It's just some something that happens when there are more boys or more girls. But are you, are you talking about in class? Or what do you mean by di di dynamic? I mean just the whole thing. Because in dentistry, these kids are together from eight in the morning till five in the evening. Right. And they they have to work together. It's so vast thing they have to do. They have to do all kinds of assignment together. They have to they work quite tight to each other. They're helping each other. They are learning together. They're they're working in groups all the time. From the first year to the last, they're always in groups, more or less. So I think it's good for the to have more to have more a little bit more than eighty twenty, and the same in the other way around. If there were too many boys, right. So, but it's it's not a big issue, but it is an issue, so to speak. If I could choose, I would have more boys. More equal. Yeah. Right, so, so like the perfect thing would be a 50-50 scenario. Yeah, yeah, or, or 60-40 in either direction. I don't care. Right, okay, yeah. Mm. But it's not a big issue, but it is an issue. All right, so, and that's something you notice? It's just the feeling you ha you have. I have, I have no, nothing that supports this theory. It's just my own feeling. Okay. You know, um, I don't really have anything more that I wanted to ask you or anything. Right. Like, but is there anything you, you want to say or anything before we all finish?
finish? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I, mean, uh, I think we've covered the most aspects right without getting too deep into the things right so the, the only thing we, you, you really want to say is just that everybody should brush their teeth two times a day dental floss once times a day in the evening yeah and maybe brush their teeth not yeah. to brush their or like scrape their tongue yeah that's more if you want to right it's not really it doesn't change so much the, <laughs> if you get a hole or not but it's good for the environment, so to speak, people around you. Right, right. Well, uh, thank you for uh, being here. Thank you for inviting me.